The story commences by introducing us to Andy and Vicky McGee, a young couple who have recently become parents to a baby girl named Charlie. One fateful night, as Vicky places Charlie in her crib, a sudden and unexpected fire erupts. Andy rushes in to save the baby and discovers an astonishing truth. Charlie possesses pyrokinetic abilities, the power to ignite objects with her thoughts. Fast forward several years, and Charlie is now an eight-year-old girl. Currently, Andy heads to the kitchen and discovers Charlie, Ryan Kira Armstrong, sitting alone, distressed after a nightmare. Seeking to console her, he engages in a heartfelt conversation with Charlie, who opens up about her concerns regarding her pyrokinetic abilities, which she refers to as, the bad thing. Andy's support brings comfort to Charlie, and shortly after, Vicky enters the scene, joining them in preparing breakfast together. As the narrative progresses, we delve into the family's past. In the year 2008, Andy and Vicky were college students who took part in a top-secret experimental trial involving a substance known as, LOT6. This experiment granted them psychic powers, with Andy gaining telepathy and mind control, while Vicky developed telekinesis. However, the experiment had catastrophic consequences, leading to the death of many participants and leaving lasting side effects for the survivors. Since that time, Andy and Vicky have been living on the run, with Andy utilizing his powers as a life coach to help people. He demonstrates his power, known as, the push, to persuade a woman to give up smoking, even though he suffers from a severe side effect that causes him to bleed from his eyes, slowly killing him. In the present time, Charlie now faces relentless bullying at school due to her extraordinary abilities. Her parents have taught her to suppress her emotions to avoid accidentally starting fires. During school, Charlie endures teasing from her classmates, particularly from a snobby kid named Gavin. However, their teacher, Ms. Gardner, Tina Young, treats Charlie with kindness. Upon returning home, Vicky discovers Charlie in tears, feeling like an outcast. However, Vicky consoles her, providing reassurance that she is unique and special. Vicky believes in nurturing Charlie's abilities and teaching her to control them, while Andy leans towards the idea of suppressing her powers to prevent danger. Their differing viewpoints lead to heated arguments between the couple. The following day, while participating in gym class, Charlie is struck during a game of dodgeball. The bullying becomes unbearable for Charlie, and she goes to the bathroom to calm herself down. Ms. Gardner follows and finds Charlie hiding in the bathroom stall, and in a fit of anger, she inadvertently causes a massive explosion in the bathroom, shocking everyone present. The incident triggers a police investigation, prompting Andy and Vicky to contemplate leaving town. Feeling like a monstrous outcast and blaming her mother for her abilities, Charlie yearns for a normal life like other children her age. During a heated argument with her parents, Charlie accidentally sets Vicky's hands on fire, but Andy intervenes promptly and extinguishes the flames. Unbeknownst to the family, Captain Hollister, the new chief of the Department of Scientific Intelligence responsible for the original experiment, is determined to capture Charlie. Hollister enlists the help of John Rainberg, a former victim of the experiment who was once a bounty hunter but now leads a menial life as a janitor. Andy takes Charlie out for ice cream in an effort to uplift her spirits. Meanwhile, back at home, Vicky is left alone. Rainberg launches an attack on Vicky, who struggles to defend herself as she hasn't practiced her powers regularly. Rainbird discovers Vicky and subjects her to interrogation about Charlie's location. A brief altercation ensues between them, but Rainbird ultimately overpowers Vicky, resulting in her tragic demise. Upon returning home, Andy and Charlie sense that something is amiss and discover Rainberg, who has successfully taken Charlie captive. Although weakened by his powers draining him, Andy valiantly attempts to stop Rainberg but is thwarted. In a panic, Charlie starts screaming for her mother, and her escalating emotions trigger a massive explosion that saves them from the dangerous captor. With Rainberg knocked unconscious, Andy seizes the moment, swiftly grabs Charlie, and flees the scene, knowing that their struggle is far from over. Later, we witness Captain Hollister in a meeting with Dr. Joseph Wanless, the same individual who conducted the initial experiments. Throughout the encounter, it becomes evident that Dr. Wanless now comprehends the dangerous nature of his past work. He discloses that he had to cease the experiments due to the inherent hazards involved, 
leading to his confinement in a mental hospital as a consequence of his resentment. Captain Hollister's purpose in meeting the doctor is to recruit him, but Dr. Wanless adamantly declines the offer, straightforwardly suggesting that he should eliminate the kid in question, or else he would find himself in significant trouble. Meanwhile, Charlie and Andy park their car near a rural farm, with Andy deep in slumber and Charlie wandering about. During her explorations, Charlie spots a cat and decides to play with it. However, the cat bites her as it senses danger emanating from her. Instantly, Charlie's reaction is to use her power, unintentionally burning the cat. Deeply distraught by the incident, Charlie tearfully explains everything to Andy, expressing her reluctance to harm the cat. Sympathizing with her, Andy realizes his own mistakes and decides to teach her how to control her abilities more precisely. Together, they bury the cat and leave their car behind to hitchhike. A compassionate elderly man named Eva Motters comes to their aid, stopping his car to help them. In a quick turn of events, Andy hypnotizes him, persuading him to drive them to Boston for a payment of 100 bucks. Once in Boston, they visit Eva's house for dinner and stay overnight. During their time there, Charlie begins to hear voices emanating from a particular room. Upon investigating, she discovers Eva's wife, Essie, who has been in a coma and bedridden for several years, rendering her unable to speak. Remarkably, Charlie manages to communicate with Essie despite her condition. The three of them enjoy a pleasant dinner, and afterward, while resting, Andy reveals to Charlie some of the earlier attempts by the organization DSI to kidnap her. In 2013, two DSI agents successfully abducted her from Andy's house, but Andy intervened, hypnotizing one agent into killing the other and himself. Regretful for the consequences, Andy imparts an important lesson to Charlie, emphasizing that she should only use her power in self-defense and must never intentionally harm others. The following day, Eva tuned into a news clip on TV only to discover that Andy had been declared a fugitive, leading to a heated argument and a small physical altercation. Andy tried explaining his situation, but Eva's anger prevented her from listening to his side of the story. In the midst of this, Charlie informed Eva about Essie, revealing that Andy's negligence had caused their son's death and Essie's subsequent coma. Over the years, Andy had carried the burden of guilt and sought forgiveness from Essie, to which Charlie revealed that Essie had forgiven him. Eva was astonished by Charlie's ability to seemingly read minds, and she started to consider that the police might be after them for reasons beyond the murder. Nevertheless, Eva had already informed the police, and they were now at her doorstep. She asked Sandy and Charlie to hide in another room while she dealt with the situation. Eva tried to deceive the police, claiming that she had mistakenly called them and was merely asleep. However, the police remained unconvinced and insisted on searching the place. As the police took their first step forward, a sudden hail of bullets from Rainbird killed them all. Rainbird was responsible for the deaths of the officers and shot Eva in the legs. Charlie and Andy rushed out to escape, with Charlie intent on seeking revenge against Rainbird, but Andy urged her to run away instead. Andy attempted to hypnotize Rainbird to no avail, realizing that the man had strong defense mechanisms. At that moment, DSI agents arrived at the scene and arrested both Andy and Rainbird. These agents wore special lenses that protected them from hypnotism. Hollister, furious at Rainbird for compromising what was supposed to be a covert operation, questioned Andy about Charlie's connection with him. Hollister believed that if they brought Charlie to him, she would be safer than remaining in the open world where her powers might accidentally harm others. Hollister intended to train her and potentially use her as a weapon in the future. However, Andy was aware of Hollister's plan and firmly refused to cooperate. Meanwhile, in the woods, Charlie was honing her powers and had a vision of the DSI facility along with the sound of ocean waves. She believed her father was trying to communicate with her through his powers. Following her intuition, she ended up in a town and used her hypnotic abilities on three children to obtain food and a bicycle. Charlie set her sights on reaching the DSI facility, and along the way, she encountered a tech support agent named Jules. Intimidated, Jules pleaded with Charlie not to harm him, revealing that his wife was pregnant. Charlie took his phone and clearance pass and inquired about any weapons he might have, to which he falsely claimed he had none, assuming Charlie to be just a child. 
Upon seeing the gun, Charlie's defense mechanism instinctively triggered, resulting in a burst of fire that killed Jules. The security guard monitoring the CCTV witnessed the fire and alerted the guards. Charlie proceeded to disable cameras and attack guards as she made her way to her father, Andy, who was gravely injured and bleeding. Time was running out, and Andy's life hung in the balance. Captain Hollister made every effort to catch up with the young kid, addressing her as Charlie and emphasizing her uniqueness. Hollister informed Charlie that she, too, had experienced sickness like her father, but they were not villains and were willing to assist her in honing her abilities. Charlie, however, was in no mood to listen, already aware of the DSI agency's true nature. Andy apologized to Charlie and used his abilities for one last time, setting the place ablaze. In the chaos, Charlie retaliated, burning Andy and Hollister. Subsequently, Charlie proceeded to burn down the entire facility, and a few guards, wearing fireproof cloaks, attempted to capture her. Rainbird unexpectedly fired at them from behind, eliminating the threat. He then confronted Charlie, feeling guilty for killing her mother but also acknowledging that he had called her to the DSI headquarters using his powers. Rainbird revealed that Charlie was not just his sister, but also the embodiment of the rage they had concealed from the world. He believed that she would bring death upon him and was ready to accept his fate. Witnessing Charlie's immense power, Rainbird realized that she was beyond their control and that she would annihilate anyone who threatened her or her family. He began to respect her as an all-powerful force, the culmination of their abilities. In the aftermath, Charlie managed to escape and continued to destroy the entire place. Exhausted from the ordeal, Charlie eventually collapsed, and Rainbird, displaying an empathetic side, offered her a helping hand. He carried her to safety, and his character departed from the original portrayal, as he surrendered himself to Charlie's power rather than being captivated by the idea of destroying her. He came to believe that she was the messiah they needed to defeat their enemies, and he saw her as a force to be respected. In the last scene, Rainbird was seen carrying Charlie in his arms and whisking her away into the dark of the night.